the diaphragm. So you're already, it's already getting complex, even if you're simplifying anatomy. Um, but this is the whole idea of anatomy plus to now really look at the functions and the connections of those single separated structures. The diaphragm separates the upper cavity from the lower cavity. Quite a key structure. I'm going to take out the lungs here just because it's more visible that way. And you can see a little bit of that dome shape structure. Let me bring it a little closer. There you go. Now, so from the stem of the spinal column, yeah, it spreads out and it touches underneath the ribs in the front, the side, and the back. That means it's a three-dimensional structure. And we talk about opening the diaphragm, it always includes various notions. First one is the diaphragmatic breathing in the first place. So from a breath tendency up here, which is called sternal breathing, yeah, I'm gonna bring it down where now that three-dimensional motion is going sideways and out. And the easiest way to demonstrate that is if I wrap something around my rib cage, basically just on top of the diaphragm. Yeah, I'm gonna get it nice and tight here, just so you can tuck it in. And I'm moving this strap into all three directions at the same time. I'm moving towards a diaphragmatic breath. That means I'm using a lot of supporting breathing muscle not just on the exhale, but on the inhale, especially on the inhale. So my inhale is now very engaged. There's muscles, supporting breathing muscles that lift the top, wide in the sides, wide in the back, open the front. And then when I exhale, I'm using towards the last part of the exhalation, I'm using my exhalation supporting muscles. So it's the ones quadratus morum that pulls the rib down, my abdominal muscles that presses the air out, and some muscles in between the ribs that close the rib, and perhaps even, depending on how much I engage, even more. In order to open the diaphragm, yeah, we start with the diaphragmatic breath. To access it more deeply, we have to consider all the ranges around it. So first one is the side opening. When I open the sides, yeah, with my belly in, so I'm not automatically in the back bend, I open the left fibers here of the diaphragm, especially combined with a diaphragmatic breath. So, there's little effort in holding the posture, but there's lots of work in making those ribs move. Same for the right side. It's a side bend to the opposite side, opening the right fibers. Then to open the front, anything that opens my shoulders, the front body, even just the lift of the front body does that opening here. Now, when we sit a lot, the kind of opposite happens. If I collapse, <laughs> collapse at my desk, right? There's a constant contraction of the front fibers of the diaphragm, which eventually gets me into a sternal breath. So just to balance breathing on a desk, breathing in a seated position, you want to open the front. Now the back gets really nice opened if I slightly round the back and forward fold, optimally even upside down. Yeah, so let's look what happens then too. So here I can with a lot of effort open the area around my kidneys. Yeah, if I do the same in a downward dog, and I'm gonna turn this one upside down for a moment, hopefully 
not everything falls off. Okay, there we go. Here. Yeah. We're in inverted position. Yeah. What now happens is it has to do additional diaphragmatic work towards the organs that are now hanging upside down. And that really opens up the breath body. That really opens up the back part of the diaphragm, besides forward folding and making this area long, just to turn it upside down. It could be a simple downward facing dog. It can also be, you know, headstand and all of that, but it's not necessary. Just to have the pelvis slide it off the head does a lot of work for the diaphragm, but also for the just the whole blood and air distribution in the body. So just to zoom out, we talked about the pelvic floor, we talked about the structure of the diaphragm, and we're going to now dive into the